Welcome Pathfinders, I'm Jessica. And I'm Rachel. While the Game Masters have been exploring the elemental planes, we players have been finding religion. Thank you. Blessings of Caden Kaylee. Does this work on anyone who reads this? Turns out they deliver. Caden's Temple does have a nice selection of ale. Sudden conversions aside, religion is a very important part of the Pathfinder RPG, something intrinsic to most characters. Or at least the divine spellcasters. The choice of a deity can say as much about your character as their homeland, alignment, or even class, perhaps even more so. Saying that you're a fighter brings a certain image to people's minds. <laughs> Saying you are a fighter that worships Caden presents an entirely different image. You get the idea. Pathfinder has a number of great books on religion in the world of Galarian, from titles as far back as Gods and Magic, to more recent books. Like Faiths of Purity. Or Faiths of Balance. Also, Faiths of Corruption. And the occasional campaign setting book. Like Heaven Unleashed. Also, two articles in every adventure path. Every second and fifth. And of course, the hardback campaign, campaign setting book. Inner Sea God. Really, there are a lot of places to learn about the gods, which is why you might be forgiven for overlooking Paizo's most recent player companion, Divine Anthology. Like most player companion books, this is 30 pages dedicated to new options for PCs, both Divine Casters and not. This book contains some new options for characters. Inside, you'll find three new archetypes to choose from, including the Amadean Enforcer Paladin, who trades, who trades their bonuses against evil for bonuses against chaos. And the Divine Champion War Priest and Divine Paragon Cleric, who focus on the deific obedience feat and boon rules from the Inner Sea Gods. If you're looking for a way to use these boons without taking a prestige class, you've come to the right place. It's worth mentioning that both of those archetypes require that you have and maintain the same alignment as your deity. So if you dislike alignment restrictions, you may want to look elsewhere. Beyond these archetypes, there are also new apocryphal subdomains. These offer new ways to use domains, granting replacement powers and different domain spells. You can gain access to these by taking uh, the new Acolyte of Apocrypha Faith trait. The difference between these and regular subdomains is that you can take some even if your deity doesn't offer the domain they tie into. For instance, even though Akakek doesn't have the animal domain, you can still take the insect subdomain. Think of it as a variant sect of the religion. Like a reformation of the Church of the Mantis God. Uh, yeah, except they still kill for money. The only difference is they can grow an exoskeleton while they do it. In addition to these cool features for divine casters, this book is filled to the brim with other great options for any character that worships a deity. You'll find lots of great new feats, such as divine communion, that lets you ask your deity if they approve of an action before you take it. And if they approve it, it grants you a bonus on rolling any rolls involved in that action. There are also new feats centered around specific deities. Like three Caden Kayleen feats that let fighters use their bravery class and features in new and exciting ways. There's also a sneaky new arcanist exploit and a new rogue talent that helps with using scrolls and three new bardic masterpieces. Oh, and of course, plenty of new spells and magic items. Let's not forget about traits. So many new faith traits. You'll find dozens scattered across the book coverings, all sorts of faiths from Razmir to Fulgrit. Fulgrit? Uh, Torag's wife. Yeah. But from the role-playing side, perhaps nothing is as exciting as all of the new Paladin codes. These are like the ones presented in the aforementioned Faiths of Purity. Right, only now providing codes for most of the Dwarven Pantheon, the Halfling Goddess Caldera, the Elven Goddess Ural, Shiruzo of the Tea and Sun Goddess, and four of the Imperial Lords. Hmm. The love for Paladins doesn't stop there, as the book also includes four new oaths for Oathbound Paladins. 
These are tied to specific goals in Galarian, such as thwarting the Whispering Way, aiding in the Medevian Crusade, defending the Sky Citadels, or hunting down corruption and abuse in the, in the politicians of Andrin. <laughs> That one seems particularly well-timed. Yeah. Speaking of political upheaval, with each passing week, we come closer to the release of the Curse of the Crimson Throne hardback. Paizo's re-release of their second adventure path. In this story, it falls to your heroes to save the city of Corvosa from toppling the edge of anarchy. While we are waiting for the book to launch to give a full review, we do want to mention that Paizo's creative director, James Jacobs, has released a short player's guide update on the Paizo message board. You can find the link below. This serves as a great addition to the Curse of the Crimson Throne player's guide that was put out for its original six book run, and also includes updated campaign traits. Note, the original traits were written for 3.5. If you are a player and want more information, you should check out the original player's guide as well. The PDF is free, and the print copy costs only one dollar. Hmm. The PDF of the revised Adventure Path launches this coming Wednesday, October 19th, with the physical copies soon to follow. Our spoiler-free review will follow soon after, but we can already say with confidence that if you're looking for a new great adventure, you should definitely check it out. This concludes our field report. Feel free to let us know your thoughts on the Divine Anthology, playing religious characters, paladin codes, or religion and tabletop gaming in general. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this segment, and return next week for our next field report. Good luck, Pathfinders! So, common? Maybe? I don't think he understands this. Crackle, crackle, pop. City of Brass. No? Maybe? Alright, I don't think he's a hell. No.